I would say the modern approach includes uh, doing something to produce a cleaner feed, doing something to keep your feed meal equipment clean, and then make sure that whatever effort you do at the feed meal carries over all the way to the production setting, to the point of consumption of that feed. And uh, because, because uh, we can talk it separately, but having more or less microbial loads in that feed is an important factor, maybe an important factor to poultry production in several different ways. Welcome to the another episode of Poultry Nutrition Black Belt. I'm your host, Dr. Christina Adekori from Mississippi State University. We have a new guest in our episode this uh, day, and he's Dr. Indrike Montiel from Anitox. Dr. Montiel, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you in this episode. And if you would like the audience to know who you are and a little bit of your background, please. I'm a poultry veterinarian. I worked in poultry all my professional life. I'm originally from Maracaibo, Venezuela. I lived 30 years in the U.S. I worked in production, worked extensively in the vaccine industry, and came to work in Anitox a little bit over three years ago. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. Wonderful. That's very nice. And then in this current position in Anitox, you are Director of Nutrition and Live Production. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about nutrition and live production. There you go. <laughs> So can you share a little bit of the latest ideas in this feed quality and maybe its impact on the performance of the bird and the biosecurity in the farm? I know it's a kind of big topic. Um, could you talk a little bit what is there um, that we need to understand? Uh, we can talk extensively about uh, feed quality in the broad sense of the word. Uh, feed quality is often understood as the nutritional value of it. And of course, that's fundamental. Uh, for poultry production, for the birds to be able to express their genetic potential and all that. There's another important aspect of feed quality and is the microbial load or the microbial quality of feed. And uh, feed plays a very important role in the whole biosecurity effort within the industry because it's been widely uh, proven that feed can serve as a vector to transport disease and infections and pathogens that you don't want to have in the poultry industry. Right, right. So could you discuss today a little bit on the latest advancement in this kind of feed quality management and uh, how they are being implemented in modern poultry production overall? Well, it's been um, the concern for uh, kind of uh, providing cleaner feed for poultry is not new is probably that with the advancement of technology, now we have better means to assess quality along those lines in poultry feeds. And a lot of uh, links have been established. We have started to find that uh, pathogens or microbes that can survive in feed can also come and cause disease in poultry flocks or in swine uh, herds. And also uh, that some of these uh, microorganisms can learn how to survive in the feed meal, which poses a totally different challenge. So I would say the modern approach includes uh, doing something to produce a cleaner feed, doing something to keep your feed meal equipment clean, and then make sure that whatever effort you do at the feed meal carries over all the way to the production setting, to the point of consumption of that feed. And uh, because, because uh, we can talk it separately, but having more or less microbial loads in that feed is an important factor, maybe an important factor, 
to poultry production in several different ways. Right. So I, yeah, I totally agree on that. We should not forget. Uh, we can put them sep. We can keep them separate. But when we really need is to put them together because at the end of the day, the birds are getting those feed, and we cannot uh, not um, include that in our conversation on our production, right? So I would like to ask you if there is any recent studies or data that can highlight these impacts, like the new technology and you know, that you're talking about, that what you're trying to do or what you have worked on and they have been relating to the poultry health better directly? We we have done, there, there's some recent uh, information, recent uh, studies that show that, uh, and I'll, I'll probably section in different parts. I mean, salmonella is an ever-present uh, worry from raw materials all the way to processing in birds. So obviously that's always a concern and there's new technologies to better identify salmonella and feed. That is not an easy task. Salmonella and feed is not easy to um, identify, to isolate. However, salmonella is not the only concern. Um, if, if we take a specific pathogen away, and we talk about microbial loads in general, some of the most recent studies indicate that decreasing the microbial loads may improve intestinal health and may uh, in better enable the birds to overcome challenges against intestinal pathogens and other pathogens in life. Right. Also, that, for example, in, in breeders or in egg-laying birds, uh, that decreasing the microbial load leads to the bird to lay cleaner eggs and in consequence produce better quality chicks. Some of these data have been already published. Right. And probably the last piece of it, which is uh, a very exciting part, is that these changes in the microbial loads trigger the development of, of a different microbiome makeup. Mm -hmm. And the microbiome has a multiplicity of functions from nutrient absorption to exclusion, uh, competitive exclusion, and to, to maintaining the in, intestinal microbiome balance that is directly related to intestinal health. Because the minute the intestine needs to change from absorption to defensive mode, that implies a uh, quote unquote, a waste of energy, inflammation, and uh, decreased performance in most cases. Oh, that's excellent. You, you, you gave us a lot of ideas and information on what's happening. And I know we, we always like publications because then that, in that way we know what's coming out and what's, the, what's there and the recent um, <clears throat> advancement there, right? I mean, you have to publish your work um, no matter which way, press release or a press, a newspaper, or even a, a, an article. So we, mm -hmm. I really appreciate that, being on the forefront of that. Um, I would like to join a little bit. Uh, I'm here in this conversation about the biosecurity. I know this was kind <laughs> of um, <laughs> another leg of our talk today. So I would like to, you know, you to, you know, kind of mention a little bit of some examples, especially on these biosecurity breaches and that have been linked to the poor feed quality and how they were managed. Um, in your, in your experience, how they could be managed? Within our industry guidelines, uh, biosecurity guidelines, feed is mentioned as one of the factors. If you look at the National Poultry Improvement 14 Principles of Biosecurity, feed is one of them. Feed and litter is, is one of them. If we think, and I, I say this very often, we can think of, a, of the feed is like a Trojan horse mm -hmm. because when a feed truck arrives in a farm, we disinfect the outside of the truck. We sometimes make the driver take a shower, work protective gear, um, disinfect the tires, the outside. However, the contents of the truck, which is the feed, sometimes come untouched from the feed mill to the farm. So yes, we disinfect the outside, but whatever that feed may or may not contain will go directly into the bird. Yeah. So feed is always a subject of testing. I think it's very important to establish a baseline to understand what risk your feed represents to your biosecurity. 
And that risk starts from the raw materials, mm -hmm. from the raw materials into the finished feed, into your feed uh, milling process, and into your transportation to the farm. And all that together would determine if feed uh, poses a breach, a, a threat to your biosecurity program, and exactly what kind of threat. Excellent. Thank you for that nice um, insight into those breaching and breaching protocol on the biosecurity protocol and this feed. Um, it's awesome. So a last question before we, we wrap up our episode. Um, looking into the future, what emerging trends or innovations down the line do you see um, shaping this landscape of, of feed quality and, and also the biosecurity of this poultry industry? I think in terms of uh, biosecurity related to feed and feed hygiene as such, it, it, the future is a little back about back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Because if you consider feed manufacturing as a process, the risk starts from the crops, from the harvest, and continues in storage, continues into the feed mill, and continues into farms. So again, the future would be on probably more refined tools and a, a probably a more refined way to really establish, number one, your risk, like determine exactly the caliber of the risk you're taking with your current feed manufacturing practices. Number two, determine when and where you need to intervene to mitigate those risk factors. And number three is to have a, a written program on how you're gonna test it. How you're gonna test to see, number one, what your situation is, and number two, what are the results of the various interventions that you implement. Yeah, excellent. And we should not forget that feed is the number one, or I mean, a top three in our list when we talk about the biosecurity and how we manage the bird. Excellent job, Dr. Montiel, today in this episode. Um, I think we should have a separate episode and a, a lot of talk about biosecurity. I really appreciate your time. For all the listeners, um, see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you for having me today.